Welcome, it's so wonderful to connect with you again. I just wish it was over a cuppa so that we could kind of catch up properly. But how are you doing? I hope you're doing okay, but maybe you're really struggling. And if you are, then please reach out. You really don't have to struggle alone. Or well, actually, maybe you're doing all right and you don't have to feel bad about that. My guess is that over these past um, eight weeks or so, um, you've probably encountered like both uh, ranges of um, emotion. Whatever place you find yourself in today, you are very loved and you're valued and you're appreciated. And we are praying for you and we thank God for you. And I just hope that you hear his well done. As you can see, we're not in the potting shed today. It's a little bit chilly. So I've brought you into my office um, slash spare room slash studio. And if I'm to be completely honest, slash um, junkyard, because it's a little bit uh, messy behind the camera. And the reason that I've brought you here is because I wanted to show you something. And it's this quilt here. It's uh, very colourful and I think it's rather wonderful. But it's not any ordinary quilt. Oh no, it embodies so much more than that. <laughs> You see, my friends made it for me on my uh, Hindu, and each friend made a panel of something that kind of reminded them of me, and it kind of brings back so many memories. So I look at this, and I'm reminded of a lot of cycle trips that I've done, some snowboarding, camping, some of the things I got up to at Girl Guides, <laughs> youth group, some of the youth residentials I used to run with the young people and a wedding that I helped with in uh, New Zealand, a friend of mine, a very good gig if you could get it. So you can see that this quilt, it might look ordinary, but actually it's something that's quite extraordinary and it embodies so much more than just cotton and cloth. I don't know about you, but I feel very ordinary and that's just on a good day. <laughs> I remember I kind of desperately uh, wanting to be wise <laughs> and like when there's a pastoral situation, wanting to be able to say something or bring some scripture that's going to really be able to speak into the situation and make things better for a person. Maybe that will provide a solution to something that's quite complex. Do you kind of get that? But then someone very helpfully um, said to me that they felt that God was saying that it's not so much about words that I speak, but it's just who I am, that myself, bringing myself into a situation is a gift. And I don't think that's a word that's just for me. I think it's for you too. Just being you is a gift. God uses who we are. It's our ordinary being. The real us with uh, no pretense. So it's our frailty, our vulnerability, our lack of tech knowledge, our weariness, our stretched in every direction selves. Somehow the ordinary us embodies so much more. Why? because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Breathe that in, my friends. You may feel ordinary, but you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of hope fills us with joy. And it goes beyond a kind of warm, fuzzy feeling to something much deeper, much richer. It's precious. It changes the atmosphere of a room. You meet a joyful person and you feel hopeful. The God of hope fills us with peace. 
a peace that's not dependent on what's happening in this world. It goes much deeper than that. It's much richer. It's precious. And it can change the atmosphere in a room. It brings hope. You meet a peaceful person and you feel more hopeful. And so as Paul prayed for the church in Rome, that too is my prayer for you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You may feel ordinary, but with God's power at work in you, you embody hope. And that, my friends, is something quite extraordinary.